So, today is Memorial Day. And, as usual, on Memorial Day, I'm pissing off the military industrialists who uh, needlessly get people killed and then, like, later on have us memorialize them. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny that uh, this is a controversial thing, but it just shows you how invested people are in their political bullshit. So, today, I, uh, I posted one of my usual lists of things, uh, that I've been posting for years, and that list of things was, like, things to remember on Memorial Day. Uh, I said, this Memorial Day, remember, the U.S. lied its way into every war. It's always been about profit and increasing global power. Dead civilians cause blowback. The CIA created the modern terror threat. Most current conflict is illegal. The U.S. is not under attack. And then I finish it off by saying, didn't need to die. Well, this pissed off a bunch of spineless losers, a bunch of jack-off chair jockeys who, like, they've never seen combat, uh, but they're very upset that I'm talking this way. Um, the first one, the first, like, major one that I upset was <laughs> this guy named Kareem Rifai, uh, who says, quote, Guy woke up on Memorial Day and thought the best way to honor the troops was to imply that Pearl Harbor never happened. Yeah, he didn't quote me because there's no quote in that tweet that says Pearl Harbor never happened. I have never said Pearl Harbor never happened. Not once. Um, that's fucking stupid. It's a lie. And... The whole idea of this tweet is contemptuous to the truth. But that didn't stop this stupid-looking Gen Z influencer from lying and getting, uh, right now, a total of 161 likes on his lie. He also then went further to... Uh, bemoan the fact that I responded to his lies with Ron Paul quotes. So, my, my <laughs> quote tweet of his tweet uh, was, I never said it never happened, but feel free to lie. Best way to honor the troops is to stop sending them to needless conflict. I posted two Ron Paul quotes. I am convinced that there are more threats to American liberty within the 10-mile radius of my office on Capitol Hill than there are on the rest of the globe. Ron Paul. What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? That's part of a great speech, by the way. I'll uh, link it in a card up there. Um, <laughs> I also got, uh, I think somebody who thinks like this guy has serious mental health issues, which means because I oppose war, I'm insane. Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny how because I oppose uh, needless and illegal conflict, uh, the people are lied into for profit and power, I'm somehow mentally unstable it's not the people baying for blood like a pack of bloodthirsty animals it's not the gen z losers who are very new to all of this <laughs> it's uh it's it's the guy who has taken enough time to really look into these issues and come to a conclusion that maybe we shouldn't be killing people i don't know I feel like the people who are talking positively about killing people are the ones who have more to answer for. I feel like we should err on the side of not killing people. I feel like killing people 
is the insane thing to do unless it's absolutely necessary. I feel like that's insane. Hmm. But I guess I'm, like, odd now? I mean, to be clear, my followers like what I posted, right? They like what I posted. They have been liking and retweeting it all day. I've even got some likes and retweets from some people who've had some problems with me. But the issue is that a lot of people don't have any actual physical skin in the game. They never have. They've never been over there. Bunch of Gen Z losers. That's all they are. Um, and the people who are accomplice to the bunch of Gen Z losers because if you can get a bunch of kids to parrot your narrative uh, and you can retweet that or like that, uh, it saves you the pain of actually having to defend your own ideas. Because all you got to do is press that button and ba-boom, your idea is out there, but they'll catch the flack for it. It's highly in irresponsible, but you know, don't let the facts stop you, <laughs> you know? You want to hide behind a bunch of inexperienced kids, feel free. So, the whole idea here is that Ron Paul, for those of you who don't know, has been consistently, like, one of the only veterans to run for president. Uh, and one of the only veterans involved in war discussions for a significant period of time. Somehow, veterans always oppose war. I wonder why that fucking is, right? I mean, at least the ones who actually go for any sort of world-changing political office. Tulsi Gabbard, Ron Paul... Fucking, there are so many examples of veterans who've gone against the, the system. Before he sold out Adam Kokesh, um, <laughs> you know, the whole idea um, of Iraq veterans against the war is great. And it's spawned a significant amount of very good activists. Um, and a significant amount of anti-war people in general were people who got conscripted into service and then said, fuck this shit. Um, one of the most prominent examples I can think of is Major General Smedley Butler, who wrote War is a Racket. Uh, in that book, uh, he went over how war has always been for profit and power and not to defend the country. Um, and it's, you know, <laughs> created uh, millionaires out of nothing but blood. Um, somehow, though, I'm the insane person for opposing this. I'm the insane person for considering the possibility that it's not necessary to kill a lot of people. Are you starting to, I don't know, get that new speak vibe here? Like, maybe the language is being manipulated, the culture is being taken over by people who support the bloody regime and don't want it to go away. I mean, I'm glad that, like, I'm getting competitive engagement to this Gen Z loser. But to be clear, right? Um... There are still a significant amount of people bitching about this. <laughs> I got 10 quote tweets and a bunch of negative interactions on the primary tweet alone. Um, 11, actually, now. Let's look through some of them. C-SPAN Stan account. West Coast elite with globalist globe in her bullshit. Um... Don't care, didn't ask, plus you're an isolationist. <laughs> and uh, she goes on to an argument with somebody else and eventually ends up saying, uh, globalism is based. Hey, excellent. Um, truth sandwich. Rem remember, populists are not pacifists, just nationalistic isolationists. Jeremiah Harding notorious nationalist not like I practically 
uh, preach that like a religion, anti-nationalism. Not like I'm an anarchist who regularly goes against all forms of nationalism, no matter how evil people claim I am. Yeah, assume you know me, because I made an accurate list you can't disprove. I notice you don't have an argument, truth sandwich, master underscore deli. I notice you don't have that, because the facts disagree with you. Uh, Brian Myers, one of the uh, most reasonable responses here, he says, not sure about every war. I sort of accepted his challenge, and I said, you know, yep, all of them. He hasn't responded to that, strangely enough. Uh, so even the most reasonable uh, negative reply here, uh, he somehow still doesn't actually have an argument. Kenny Rue Shipper, Biden Chungus, says, so Pearl Harbor and the Zimmerman telegram never happened. Another one who says it, I said it never happened. A lie. Kathy Newman bullshit. I didn't even respond to this cunt. Because there's no point. You know? This loser is repeating the same stuff the initial loser posted. And nothing else. Oh, it never happened? No, it happened. It was just based on lies. For those of you who don't know, the U.S. had advanced knowledge that it was going to happen. But, you know, you can't have a real strong day of infamy if you prevent an attack and then say there was a declaration of war. You wouldn't be able to justify conscription, necessarily. You wouldn't be able to justify the rounding up of all Japanese citizens in your racist, fascist little concentration camps. You wouldn't be able to justify a huge amount of wartime spending uh, that helped the economy that you destroyed with excessive interventionism. Uh, you wouldn't have any of that if the cause wasn't significantly bad. And if all you did was stop an attack, it wouldn't look as bad. So you let the attack happen. That way, you can have your day that will live in infamy. And after all of that, People will be like, oh yeah, we gotta go, we gotta go gung-ho to war, we gotta buy war bonds, we gotta be super American. Even though, of course, the U.S. was still spewing out racist propaganda. Even though the U.S. was being massively fascist in its war production. Even though all of that was true. Uh, the U.S. is somehow the morally righteous actor here. Uh... <laughs> So, to be clear, no, I never said Pearl Harbor didn't happen. Not once. Um, I said that the pretext for it was based on lies. In this case, a lie of omission. You tell people exactly what you want them to to increase your power, and then you don't tell them what might decrease your power, or reduce the maximum power increase that you could potentially get. It's all a game to these motherfuckers. Okay? A game paid in human lives. So, Alex says, you're a garbage human being. Leave this country. Uh, this one with a, <laughs> a little fucking NATO-looking profile. Calls himself an American observer of world affairs, sure. Right. OGMGS1 uh, is certainly going to convince me to not be in this country anymore. Not like the whole point of this country initially could have been to, like, you know, not leave and change it. Because the real preferable solution here isn't to vacate whenever something gets bad. It's to make it not bad anymore. Almost like that's how everything gets done, and they really just want us to give up so that they don't have to put in any effort because these people are low-effort losers. The dipshits are out today, says Yellow Dust 888 
Thanks. Uh, you really showed me. Uh, so are you talking about the people who are speaking truth and have the facts on their side? Because if that's the case, congratulations for proving the dipshits are out today. You came out just in time for that to be true. Drord is New Jerseyan. Just finds Mississippi neat. <laughs> At polit underscore Europins. Europines. I don't fucking care. Why are leftists? It's fun. It's fun. I get to yo-yo back and forth between being a variety of things to a variety of people. Um, and in this particular case, my tweet about that was... Uh, <laughs> I, I like how... Uh, well, sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It's fun being called leftist today. Most of me, I was a fascist bigot, according to the Society for Internet Labels. Now I get to be a leftist. We'll see how long this lasts. As you all know, everyone on the internet is correct as soon as they say something. Fingers crossed. Brendan, housing equals infra infrastructure, McIntyre, uh, at OSU Phantom, um, planner, wonk. Introvert, beer drinker, lucky my boyfriend puts up with me, dog dad, he him, hashtag Kamala Harris is my VP. Kamala Harris is a, a drug war supremacist. She has helped lock up a significant amount of poor people, broken up a shit ton of families, and she's perfect as the vice president to crime Bill Biden and his war hawkish interventionism. So no wonder you're opposed to an anti-war stance. No wonder you're opposed to a stance that wants less people to die. That's just who you are. It's okay. Um, <laughs> and they didn't like it much when I pointed out how absurd what they were saying was, I'm sure. But the point is that I, we get down to Brienne Jackson can't believe this guy doesn't have comedian in his bio. Nope. My bio says I'm a hedgehog because I don't fucking care what people want to label me with. And it's more fun when they just label me however they want. Plus, again, just like I said yesterday, Sonic the Hedgehog is excellent uh, as a starting point for liberty. So those are the quote tweets, right? Um, <laughs> and... I pointed out in, in my most recent tweet, 10 quote tweets, all mad, but with no evidence against what I said. Most liked quote tweet is a Gen Z Insta influencer. Checked the likes, not a veteran in sight. Plenty of self-admitted hawks, neoliberals, and neocons, though. And minors or new adults. Mean meanwhile, vets are retweeting me. They know it's true. This is true. I've constantly got veterans retweeting me uh, and my anti-war posts because they know it's true and they know that even though I'm some long hair in the middle of Washington from the Southern California desert, that doesn't mean that I don't understand what I'm talking about. The fact that I've never spilled blood for the government doesn't mean that I can't remark on how fucked that is. It's almost like the government investigating the government and finding out the government did nothing wrong isn't the way investigations should work. It's almost like the fact is third party people like me, as in not political party, but as in first or second and then third party being the like parties to an incident, maybe third parties like me who can look at it with a fresh face who weren't there uh, have an interesting way of looking at it. It's almost like veterans don't need you to memorialize them by making more people to memorialize. Something to think about. Uh, also, meanwhile, the Gen Zer who quote tweeted is mad that I posted a Ron Paul quote against war because piss being pissed off at anti-war veterans with three times the life experience these dumb kids have is their bread and butter on Memorial Day. Some are also mad at Major General Smedley Butler, 
It just proves that these losers are really mad that not everyone agrees with them and additionally peeved that people aren't doing what they say. That's why they're literally supporting a lying post, as long as it's against the anarchist. This is what statism does, folks. That's relatively concise, I would say. You know? That's relatively concise. Statism gets people to support awful things because they don't like somebody like me opposing those awful things. It's all ad hominem, 100%. There's no logic in these statements. These statements are 100% rooted in fallacy. <laughs> and that's why Legal Observer, after a long, poorly done argument, can reject completely an article from the independent.org um, saying, well, independent.org, the independent, I don't know what le that leads to, but uh, w when that article was posted talking about how Freedom of Information Act files prove FDR had adv advanced knowledge of Pearl Harbor, um, you know, <laughs> when, when uh, there's significant enough amount of proof that at least somebody in government did, uh, this person <laughs> gets to say, LOL, the professional author who never worked in the government said, well, shit must be true, gets to be all aristocratic and shit. Uh, Meek M. says, because in order for a claim to be valid, you must have worked in government. Perfect response. Brian, who posted that, uh, says, so you're just going to gloss over this part then? where he quoted cable after cable of decryption scores of military messages that America was intercepting, clearly showed that Japanese ships were preparing for war and headed straight for Hawaii. Stinnett, an author, journalist, and World War II veteran, spent 16 years delving into the National Archives. He poured over more than 200,000 documents and conducted dozens of interviews. This meticulous research led Stinnett to a firmly held conclusion FDR knew. It's almost like there's more than one side to this. It's almost like saying that there's question that might need answer is like not saying that it didn't happen. It's almost like your lies are cunt mouthed and not actually real. But don't let that stop you. You know, you're on a roll. You're getting a lot of positive interaction, even though you didn't prove what you were saying. I was also called an isolationist, so I posted yet another Ron Paul quote, because he's got a lot of really good ones. It's one of the reasons he's one of the people who led me to uh, extreme libertarianism before I went full anarchy, and then, you know, all anarchy, sort of panarchist mentality. Um, where he says, I myself have never been an isolationist. I favor the very opposite of isolation, diplomacy, free trade, and freedom of travel. The real isolationists are those who impose sanctions and embargoes on countries and people across the globe because they disagree with the internal and foreign policies of their leaders. The real isolationists are those to choose, you, choose to use force overseas to promote democracy rather than seeking change through diplomacy, engagement, and by setting a positive example. The real isolationists are those who isolate their country in the court of world opinion by pursuing needless belligerence and wars that have nothing to do with legitimate national security concerns. Really fucking well put, wouldn't you say? But guess what? They didn't respond. They didn't respond because they don't fucking care. They're not actually going to listen to a veteran if that veteran disagrees with them. They're not here for Memorial Day. None of these people are. They're here to push a political agenda promoting war. That's the reason they're okay with being hawkish when they know nothing the fuck about what they're talking about. Because it's easier to be a hawk than to actually research things. Look into them for yourself. It's easier to take a hands-off policy and say, hey, these other people, they've got it figured out already. I don't need to do shit in that regard. 
it's easier to sit behind your computer and order troops around the globe. You know, sort of like Kevin Castley constantly defends. It's easier to do that than it is to have reasoned, measured approaches to researching the long history of conflict the U.S. has been involved in. That's part of my tweet, by the way. I think a good part of my tweet, where I went over the fact that most current conflict is illegal. Congress didn't approve this shit. The U.S. instated status of forces agreements and authorizations for the use of military force that circumvent congressional approval because the war on terror was created so that they could continue making money off of war, no matter how legal it would be without one. That's it. That's the reason that a lot of people are skeptical of things like 9-11 uh, was definitely an Al-Qaeda job. That's the reason. Because they're tired of being spoon-fed the narrative that the powers that should not be are always acting in their interests. You know? They're tired of being uh, <laughs> ordered around by a pack of lying hyenas who circle and kill anyone they want to for that little bit of meat. You know, these people aren't interested in law. They're not interested in precedent. The only thing they're interested in is making money, is getting power, is being the kinds of scum suckers who can make the world run red with rivers of blood and still sleep soundly at night. And that's who these Gen Z punks are defending. That's the paradigm they want because they've never had skin in the game. They don't have to think about it. If neocons are retweeting you, you're tweeting the wrong fucking thing. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's, it's so breathtakingly obvious how these people refuse to accept reality. I posted in response to uh, this same legal observer dude. I don't know, chick maybe. I don't fucking care. Um... War is a racket. This is a quote from Smedley Butler. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to the majority of the people. Only a small inside group knows what it's about. It's conducted for the benefit of the very few at the expense of the very many. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. In World War I, a mere handful garnered the profits of the conflict. At least 21,000 new millionaires and billionaires were made in the U.S. during the World War. I also quoted that later with a link to the full book. And in that quote... Uh, I included another quote. War is a racket. It always has been. <laughs> and I included the full scope of that. You know? That's it. It's just a racket. It has been. I get called isolationist for saying there should be no borders. There should be peace between nations because the nations should operate based on voluntary action and not the coercive power of central governments vying for blood and human sacrifice on the altar of power and profit? I'm isolationist, you cuck! I'm not isolationist. I want a world free of borders. I want what the globalists claim to want but lie about. World peace through cooperation. 
a truly free market. The ability for whoever they want, whoever wants to, to start their own commune if they don't like market participation. The ability for primitivists to live off the land without being forced back onto grid by authoritarian cunts. I want native people to finally be able to thrive on their own land without being policed by the U.S. government. I can't tell you how many videos I've seen of these people being harassed by cops on their own land. Cops who have no business being there. That's what I want. I want people to be able to hold lemonade stands and yard sales and 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 cook-offs for the fucking homeless without fear of having their food destroyed their business shut down by people who say a five-year-old needs a fucking license to put sugar lemons and water together and then exchange it for money a money which is being devalued by the day Devalued by debt, which is increased with every fucking speck of military spending. All while people are going homeless, losing their businesses, having their lives destroyed by central power. Biden spent money on bombing foreign countries before he spent it on stimulus. And I have people in my mentions telling me I'm too harsh on war. Fuck you. The powers that should not be do not care about you. They are not on your side and they never will be. This is why people like this swarm because the powers that should not be were given these cues to hand out to kids as indoctrination from a very young age through the same Prussian school model that was designed to promote nationalism, that was designed to enable these people. You want to call me a nationalist for being so anti-nationalist that I say they shouldn't be fucking killing people? Fuck you too. And I've been dealing with this shit all day. I got stamina for fucking years. Truth be told, I deal with this all year, every year. Just to a greater extent on these sacred days where people pretend to care for a bit while doing nothing to prevent more graves. So feel free to LARP. Feel free to act like you want more peace. Feel free to act like you care about veterans while spitting in the face of any veteran who doesn't co-sign your agenda. Feel free to continue to litter the graveyards of places like Arlington with your fucking (coughs) policy prescriptions. Feel free to continue bombing the world into greater levels of (coughs) devastation all while ruining our economy and enabling the 1% to get richer and then criticizing me from your stupid liberal couch about how I'm not doing enough against nationalism and I'm being isolationist for saying this should stop? Feel free. You are free to do that. You're exactly free to do that. You're not very free in a whole lot of other areas. Social media will censor you if you say too much truth. Social media that's controlled by the state. Corporations that are controlled by the state. All of these will control the message that's allowed to be broadcast and fucking conduct the orchestra of public opinion with limited options and friendly fascism will fuck all of them. All of you war profiteers who live off the blood of people you've never met both on your side and off of it. 
You're the reason the world sucks. Because you're not considering your impact on it. You don't give a fucking shit. As long as you can get your stupid fucking likes on social media, that's all that matters to you. So you'll lie. You'll obscure. You'll obfuscate the truth and prevent it from being seen. You'll encourage people to block and talk shit behind blocks. You'll encourage conquest and then claim that's not what you're doing. You'll do a whole lot of things. Because ultimately, there is a stain on the world, and that stain is a massive and bloody one, wrought from millennia of indoctrination, telling us to accept that this is normal. That's why weirdos like me need to speak up. Weirdos like us, the tireless few who are constantly angry at the way this system has abused all of us. The fringe will inherit the earth. With that being said, uh, thank you deeply to all of you who support me and my ability to make unhinged, long-winded rants like this. Um, this was entirely unscripted, save for the tweets that I read. I'm just staring at the camera right now. Um, the fact that I've been getting support over the past couple days. The fact that I had a sponsor for all of May. Um, that's been good. Uh, the fact that people want to see me continue to do this has been good. Because even though so many people in those quote tweets and in the replies kept on being diminutive, claiming my mental health is off, Claiming that nobody cares. I've been doing this. This kind and level of activism. For about seven years now. Before that, it wasn't far off from that. For about three. Basically a decade of taking more shit than most people can withstand. So if you think you're going to fucking stop me. And if you think you're going to stop us all, the people who have watched all of this happen and who are still with me, you got another think fucking coming. Because I am not stopping, and I'm going to keep on going. And for the <laughs> few people of you who I saw relishing the concept of me being banned for what I'm saying, telling people to report, <laughs> I see you. And that's the reason I'm happy this is preserved forever on the library blockchain. Because you people will not fucking control me. You will not silence me, and you will not shut me up. I'm going to do more of this than ever, if anything, just to spite you. Anyway, speaking of that sponsor, this is the last day of the sponsorship. Feel free to check out his channel. This is Opsec Drip. Opsec Drip is 60 seconds thereabouts news bites from a libertarian perspective uh, in extreme low resolution. So you can see, like, basically a terrorist video, but for freedom fighters. This is my channel link. Uh, feel free to check that out as well. Like, subscribe, share, donate, whatever you want to fucking do as long as you smash the fucking state.